morning, church. Good morning once again. We are truly grateful that God has brought us to the end of this month. God has been amazing, has always been. He guides us in our valleys when we are at our best as well. And this morning we gather together as a Nairobi Chapel Lavington and would like to take this opportunity to invite even our visitors to join us as we get to worship our God and our maker together. And talking of our maker, before we continue with our service this morning, I would like to read for us part of the account um, uh, the creation account from Genesis chapter 1, and then we are going to pray together. Genesis chapter 1, from verse 1 to 8, this is what the Bible says. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, and it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So evening and morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from, uh, which were under the, firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so, and God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were on the second day. And the creation account continues all the way to the seventh day. This morning when we talk about that we are about to engage in worshipping our maker, we do that all through the week. But we have this privilege of gathering together, even though online, to still fellowship and praise God for his goodness. He is our creator. He knows you from the inside out. He is the God that created the earth. The Bible says the earth and he also created the heaven. And at that point, they were shapeless. They were empty. They, were, they, they had nothing in them. But then God still took what looked like it was shapeless and without form and put life in it. There is nothing that we could be going on in this season that God, our creator, who speaks things into being, cannot do for us. And so our confidence in our worship and in everything that we get to do is in remembering who it is that we are offering this worship to the creator of the heavens and earth. He created you. He knows everything that is going on that looks shapeless and without form. And he's able to speak a word and turn things around. So ours is to keep worshiping him and to allow him to journey with us, our creator, every day, even in, through the difficult times that we are going through. So talking of our creator, today we have the privilege to pause as a church and remember what our creator has done for us. We know that the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for our sins so that you and I can have life. And as it's a history of the church today, we just get to pause and remember that as we share the Holy Communion together. And so here at Nairobi Chapel Lavington, we share an open table. So as long as you have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you are welcome to join us. So kindly prepare your elements at home, whatever it is that serves best for you to be able to commemorate the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. And we will be having a session together after the worship. Karibu Nisana. Praise God. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Guys at home, how are you? It's going to be back on your screens. Nairobi Chapel Lavington where we can praise our Heavenly Father together. Amen. So as we begin, I'd like you to rise up in your pajamas or yeah, tell the kids everyone, let's have an amazing time of praise and worship. We'll take you way back old school to the time of Kasanga's and let's, let's have a good time in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey. Tumeuona. Tumeuona. Kono wako buwana. Matendo yako buwana. Tumeuona, 
you to run to is our Jesus. He's our Lord and our Savior. That is who we should be running to. Any time where there's conflict, any time we're in despair, we should be running to our God. Because He's our refuge. He's our deliverer. He's our very present help in time of need. And this is what the Lord's Word says. I want to read, I want to read Psalms, Psalms 92. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name. O Most High, proclaiming your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. To the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds. The Lord makes us glad by his deeds. I will sing for joy at what your hands have done. So regardless of whatever is happening now, that we will sing for joy for what he has done ever since we are in our mother's womb. How great are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. Senseless people do not know. Fools do not understand. That though the wicked spring up, even in this time, up like grass, and all evil doers flourish, they will be destroyed. But you, O oh Lord, you are exalted forever. I want us to sing this song. It's called Made Me Glad. And we will sing that he's our deliverer, he's our fortress, he's our refuge, he's our very pleasant help in time of need. And right now, we all need our Lord. In our businesses, in our country, in the world, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord, oh God. We need you, oh God.
Jehovah, that you are a very present help in time of need, Jehovah God. Jehovah, that you are our refuge, Jehovah God. You are our strong tower, Jehovah God. You are our deliverer, O oh God. You are our portion, O oh God. Jehovah, where we can run to and hide when the evil strikes, Jehovah God. Jehovah, when everyone just falls against us, Jehovah God, you are there for us, O oh King of glory. That Jehovah, we will rise. Under your arms, we will rise, O oh God. And that's why we sing, O oh God, to declare that you are our present help, that you have made us glad, that we will sing of the joy of the Lord, of who you are, Jehovah God, of who you are, O oh God. Our very present help in time of need, O oh God, our fortress, our Father. Every other name of God. We meant you. I'm once on our mushu, Abba Father. You are our Alpha and Omega. And that's why we give you the praise.
So church, I would like us to pray together this morning. And before we do that, I would like us to read a text that is Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, and then we are going to skip to verse 14. The Bible says, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 1 to 2, but it so happened when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, that he was furious and very indignant and mocked the Jews. And he spoke before his brethren and the army of Samaria and said, what are these feeble Jews doing? Will they fortify themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they complete it in a day? Will they revive the stones from the heaps of rubbish stones that are burned? The enemies of the Jews in Jerusalem were talking like this with confidence because they understood what had happened in the past, that Jerusalem had been brought down into ashes. And so they could not understand the faith of the Jews at that point when through the leadership of Nehemiah, they chose to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Sometimes you hear God and he leads you into doing something that that people around you cannot understand except to talk down on it. But this is what we want to encourage us together. Even as we share the Holy Communion today, today the conversation we are going to be having is on family and education. Our families have been fought left, right, and center. And this morning as we share in this Holy Communion, we want to encourage one another that even given the difficulties we've been going through, it's been very clear where the gaps in the families are. When we talked about church and uh, missions, the first Sunday, it was very clear that God is calling back the family unit to be the primary, primary place for discipleship. And so this morning as we pray, I want you to think about your family and where you stand today. What are the challenges around that? Some of them stem out of our workplaces because of systems and work rhythms that will not allow the family values to thrive. And so this morning, verse 14 says, let me read from verse 13. Therefore, I positioned men behind the lower parts of the wall at the openings, and I set the people according to their families, with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and, ar I, and arose and said to the nobles, to the leaders, and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord, great and awesome, and fight for your brethren, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. This morning, I want to remind us that the battle ahead of us, where the families are concerned, must be the, it has to be that we believers will stand and believe what God has said. Because some of the Jews, when they overheard their enemies, if you read in verse 12, it says, so it was when the Jews who dwelt near them came, they told us 10 times, uh, in quotes, from whatever place you turn, they will be upon us. There are some Jews who believed they cannot overcome their enemies because they knew it doesn't matter which direction you face, family is going to face challenges. And in this case, it was about Jerusalem. That this morning, borrowing from the principle of Nehemiah 4.14, we are to fight for our families at whatever cost. And so this morning, as we prepare to take the Holy Communion together, I would like us to take some time and pray for our families. There's a lot that goes on in our families. Families. And the enemy would prefer that families remain down because he knows families make a nation. And so, Father God, we come before your presence this morning with confidence that is based on your word, my Father. We want to pray for every family that is watching this service this morning. It doesn't matter what our challenges are, dear Lord. Much earlier, we prayed and we said that you are the creator of the universe, that King of all glory, you took what was shapeless and without form, and you put life into it, dear Lord. You spoke and things came to be, oh God. Where our families are concerned, oh Lord, we come before your presence this morning, Jehovah. We look around us and we see that the culture itself is against everything that we see as values for families where scripture is concerned. But as believers, Jehovah God, talking of going beyond Sunday, this movement, Jehovah God, where you said, go and wait on the Holy Spirit. He will empower you and you will be able to do much from Samaria to the ends of the earth. This is our Samaria, our families. We come before your presence, oh God, recognizing that there are some very difficult conversations in some families that cannot be had without people fighting, without people disagreeing, and the enemy prefers that the status would remain that way. But this morning we come before your presence, taking the words of Nehemiah, Jehovah God, saying that we desire to fight for our families. Whatever 
it will take to live a better nation for our children. Heavenly Father, we are willing. Would you empower us, O oh God, through the help of the Holy Spirit, O oh God? We honor you this morning, Jehovah God. And if we had put our confidence on anything else, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. And King of all glory, as Nairobi Chapel Lavington, we come before your presence, Lord, and we ask guide us and lead us, O Lord, where our parenting our children is concerned, where discipling them at home is concerned, where taking the initiatives of the church seriously is concerned, because those are the doors that you open that we may continue to mentor and disciple the next generation. We honor you, Lord, and we give you praise. And so this morning, as we share in the Holy Communion together, this is our way of remembering your finished work at the cross. And we claim that same power and that finished work, Jehovah God, concerning our lives and our families this morning for the glory and honor of your holy name. And so for you who is worshiping from home, I would like to invite you at this moment to pick your elements, even as we share the Holy Communion together. We take this time to remember what God has done done and to ask him to strengthen our hands just like Nehemiah told the people in Nehemiah 4.14 that in whatever it is as we remember what God has done that that will give us strength to continue being everything that God has called us to be. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 from verse 23, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take it, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I would like you to take your bread and as we remember the, the broken world that we live in, that you remember this morning that we don't have to live broken lives because Jesus' body was broken for us. And so we may partake the bread together. In the same manner, he took the cup after supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. We may take the cup together. The Bible says, for as, as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Lord, we recognize the power, the solutions that comes with you dying on the cross. We never want to ever get used to this act, O oh Lord, because it's what changed everything concerning the world that we live in, O oh God. This is where life is found, Jehovah God. Our ability to remember what you have done helps us navigate challenges, helps us navigate our relationships, help us pause and hear from you, Jehovah God, to allow you to lead us, to allow you to empower us, even as we continue to move from one assignment to another. And this morning we come before your presence, oh God. We recognize that Jehovah God, you died on the cross for our sin, O oh Lord. And we remember members of our families this morning who may not have submitted themselves to your Lordship, Jesus. And we cry to you, O oh God, on their behalf in the name of Jesus. And God, we say that we are willing to fight for our families from a place of prayer, O oh God. And this coming week, as we get into a time of prayer and, family, and fasting, Jehovah, may this be one of the areas that we continue to cry to you about, oh God. We know you are a savior. Some of us carry testimonies of things you have done in the past, of people in our family members that we prayed for and you brought to a place of salvation. We will not give up, Jehovah, for the family unit. And so this morning, in remembrance on your finished, of your finished work on the cross,
And as we come to a close of the conversations around the seven sectors of society, we submit ourselves to your Lordship. And we thank you, Lord, because we know that you will continue to guide us and to lead us where the church beyond Sunday is concerned. We cannot slide back to where we were before because, Lord, we have to get it going, oh God. We have to understand our assignment at home. And not just depend on the two hours on Sunday morning. We honor you and we give you all the glory. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. And the church said, amen and amen. God bless you so much for participating in our service uh, so far. God has been good to us. This month and the last month, we have continued with our conversations on the movement, hashtag Beyond Sunday. And this has been one of our greatest conviction during this time, where we have taken time to think about who we are, what is our role as the church. And by as a church, I mean you and I. What are some of the gaps and the good things that came out, especially through this crisis that we've been navigating together? And one of the things that we said is that truly, the church cannot continue to be about the inside of the the four walls of the church. Neither can it be just about Sunday morning. And so very soon, we are going to be sharing with you details on what Beyond Sunday looks like here at the Nairobi Chapel, Lavington, as we continue to, uh, to, to worship and to walk in obedience where whatever God is telling us is concerned. So this morning, I would like to invite you to another time to worship the Lord with your tithes and offering. Thank you for your continued uh, generosity and uh, consistent in giving to the Lord and to the work of the Lord. I would like to remind you that there are many families that have continued to benefit because of your generosity, particularly where the care parks are concerned. And so we want to say thank you to each and every one of you. This morning, if you would like to give via um, M-Pesa, you can, uh, our pay, pay bill number is 761 7 and account name for the care park is you write care pack and it's for tithes and offering. You go ahead and write tithes and offering. God bless you as you continue to serve God in this way. For those of you who prefer to do uh, uh, cash transfer through bank transfers, our uh, bank is NCBA and the details are on the screen. And our branch is Prestige Plaza. Our account number is 1004874281. 1004 God bless you as you continue to give. Father God, we thank you because you have continued to teach us what generosity is, oh God. I remember at the beginning of this year we prayed and we had a sermon where we said generosity is not giving. Generosity is not giving away. Generosity is investing. That the why behind what we do, oh God, is everything. And so Jehovah God, I pray that you'd continue to enlarge our vision, our understanding of you, so that we give from a place of wanting to make better, from a place of wanting to obey. And so God, for everybody that is watching this service this morning and is trusting you for a clear vision, is trusting you for a way that their life can make impact, oh Lord, I pray that God... You show up strong in their lives for the glory and honor of your holy name. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and give thanks. And the church said, Amen. So without further ado, I would like to take this opportunity to invite our panelists for today. Today, like I mentioned earlier, we get to go through the conversation family and education. And so our interviewer for today is Pastor Titus uh, Otieno from Nairobi Chapel, Langata. And our panelist for the day is our very own Pastor Charles Minor who is um, he's a pastor here at Nairobi Chapel and also happens to be in the agriculture sector. We also have Paps. We, we love calling her Paps, but she's actually called Perpetua. She fellowships at a church called One Tribe on Kiambu Road. We also have Wangare Kamau, who is one of our members here at the Nairobi Chapel, Lavington. And so without further ado, I would like to welcome them to take us on to the, our last conversation on the movement Hashtag Beyond Sunday. Karibu sana. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Judy, for that wonderful time of prayer. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whichever time you're watching us. Welcome to another uh, time of uh, 
just where we want to have a wonderful conversation. And today we are looking at uh, the conversations will be revolving around the education and family sector. And with me today here are extinguished guests who have uh, joined us today to um, help us just unpack the conversations that we'll have today. And therefore I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves uh, briefly and then as we proceed. So I'll begin with you, um, Wangare. Wangare, tell us your name. Um, thank you very much. My name is Wangari Kamau. Um, a mother to two lovely children, one boy who's turning 15 next week, and Kerago, who is 12 and a half. Um, I've also been married to Festus Kerago for 17 years. We celebrated 17 years in March this year. And I'm really um, passionate about the family about um, just imparting um, the next generation with godly values, um, godly principles. I'm also a creative. Uh, I love using my hands. And um, um, I'm hoping that God would continue using me to impact um, the ne next generation in using my creative skills. Wow, thank you so much, Wangari, and welcome to our program today. Karim Sana Pubs. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Paps Wanyugi. I'm a life coach, I'm a psychologist, and I'm a mentor. And I'm passionate about families and, and also about education because I have programs that work with schools. I started doing mentorship in 2006, and then in 2015, uh, redesigned to have a program that accommodates even the preteens. And this is something I'm passionate about, to see families whole, and especially to inspire the next generation, which starts now. And I'm so glad to be here this morning. I'm also part of the 8020 Club, which is the coaching platform for the church and also the Kawangware Mentorship Program. Those are things that are dear to my heart. Glad to be here today. Amen. Thank you so much and welcome. Yes, Pasi. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. <laughs> my name is uh, Pastor Charles Maina Kiragu. I serve here at Nairobi Chapel, Lovington. I also have um, a lot of interest in uh, development, advisory work, and agriculture. I am a father. I am a husband. I, uh, we have two kids, myself and Joyce, my wife, uh, Abby and Andy. Abby is four years and is turning two in the month of, uh, actually, this month of September. Thank you. Karibu Nisana. And uh, just a reminder, my name is Titus Oteno. I'm a pastor and uh, a husband to one female wife, and I love the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Wangari, you've mentioned that you are passionate about creative, creative. Tell us more about what you do. Okay, so I run a company called Umba Creations that started about just over two years ago. And within Umba, I'm building a brand called Rafiki Values Tribe, which really is a tribe of values to teach and to impart our, our children on um, godly principles. And then the business started, um, the business idea actually started a few years ago um, as a result of my son's teddy bear, which I have with me here today. Um, so this teddy bear um, is a teddy bear that was gifted to my daughter when she turned a year old. And so when my son was a few months old, about f four months old, I realized that he didn't have a gift or a soft toy. So I used this um, teddy bear and I would put it in his bed and I would dangle it over his cot and sing um, the ironic blessing of Numbers chapter 6, verse 23, saying the Lord bless you and keep you. And so I would do that and he would be so happy and he would then fall asleep. So I was like, oh, okay. So I, I would then tell stories um, to him using this um, this teddy bear. And then as the years went by, I realized that perhaps I need to create another teddy bear for children that could speak into the lives of children. And that's how um, Umba Creations um, came to be. And, and that's why we then created these dolls. And within these dolls um, lives a value of trend values um, based on the Holy Spirit, um, values of hard work, values of love and joy and peace and gratitude. Um, and basically that's, that's how my, you know, my business came to be as a result of my son's toy and as a result of wanting to just speak into the lives of children. And then from these, um, dolls, 
I then uh, developed uh, a, a pack of playing cards to just try and push that message of values even further. So then you find that the children then are able to then relate um, as they play with, with the cards. So this is a, the, um, the cards that we developed recently, sorry. We developed recently to show the values that live within um, the dolls. Yeah, that's what I do. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, later you'll be telling us what really inspired you to, um, to begin that kind of a project. Thank you. Uh, perhaps you've described yourself as a um, millennial. I wonder how that came to be. Um, let me say I am concerned about my, you know, and uh, when I think about the current issues and everything that is happening, I believe millennials are right in the midst of it because this is a generation that is kind, kind of trying to shift things from the traditional. You know, we are pushing boundaries and doing things differently. And of course, that also brings in new challenges that were not foreseen by the previous generations. And um, when I look at the issues of parenting, the issues of family, the issues of education, the issues of career, like even the life work balance, which is a big deal in this time and age, that is a millennial situation. Because in the past, the workplaces were not redesigned to accommodate us. But now the conversations are coming back to the table. We need to consider this generation. And the other thing that I also say about my generation, we are also vulnerable. I think we are a vulnerable generation raising a more vulnerable generation because in all these dynamics, first of all, we didn't have a reference. Millennials, most of the things that they're even going into in terms of even the careers that are coming up. I mean, when our parents were growing up, DJing was not a career, makeup was not a career. And right now, those big deals that are coming along, it's because they have charted a path. But with charting a path and being pioneers, there are also challenges that have been born in the process. And being empathetic about my generation, being coming from that side of life, and also looking at how do we still raise functional children. I count myself as one of the children who are broken. I was a broken child, especially as a teenager. And I think that really, really inspired my passion to see children who are whole. And when I started out, I was not a psychologist, I was not a life coach, I was just a passionate girl trying to rescue other girls when I was around 19. Yeah, that is when I started doing mentorship in 2006. And then just coming through this and being able to see how do I also help my generation and the generations to come become more functional. And so when I call myself a millennials coach, it's because I want to see a next whole generation and I believe that our generation is the game changer. Yes. I've picked something you've mentioned that uh, brokenness, what I'm hearing is like your brokenness became an inspiration. Very, very true. All right. and, and of course, also from the brokenness uh, comes the assignment because I'm also trying to look at how do we prevent more broken children from coming up. And I want to use that doll. Yeah, thank you for this doll. First of all, this doll belongs to a 12-year-old boy called Kirago. And when I look at this doll, it's a broken doll. But Kirago still loves it. And that is the same way our children still love us even when we are broken. You know, they'll still come to us. They will still continue valuing us. But it doesn't mean that one day when they grow up, they will not end up being this broken doll themselves. And so what am I doing today so that I can make sure there are no more broken people and broken generations coming after me? As much as I may be coming from a place of brokenness myself, how do I become the last generation that is broken? By making sure that I'm intentional to make sure that the other generations that are coming after me are actually whole. Yes. Thank you very much, Pap. We'll be picking up from um, that point of brokenness and we'll uh, dive deeper into what that means and how that looks at like in um, for the generation today. Pastor Charles, there's something you mentioned about um, agriculture. Um, tell us about this passion. Uh, the Africa Development Bank um, has released some very interesting statistics uh, regarding um, food production in this continent. And they say that last year as a continent, we spent about $47 billion on food importation. So in economic terms, they call it the food importation bill. And so they're saying that if we do not work on our production by the year 2025, it's in five years, we'll be spending $110 billion annually on food importation. The population of this continent is growing. In fact, they are saying that the population of Eastern Africa by 2050 will be maybe at par with the population of India 
India is, I think, 1.3 billion. So our population is growing, but our food production is declining. Um, we have over 600 million hectares of uncultivated land in this continent. And so there are a couple of things that I believe that we need to put together to avert uh, this uh, food crisis. Uh, because if our population is growing and our production is going down, it means somewhere along the way uh, we're going to have a severe food shortage or we'll be spending a lot of money on food. Um, we have, I'm sure, read the story of uh, Joseph in the book of Genesis. Um, it came to a time when, the, you know, there was a severe famine and because of the wisdom that God had given Joseph, he was able to avert a food crisis. But then people ended up spending their money, all the coins and all the money that they had on food. And I believe that God has given us this insight to be able to prepare better. Um, we are, you know, blessed as a continent. Uh, we have a lot of arable land. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, water. In some of these countries in the West, you know, when it's winter, they can't grow anything. And so there's a lot of reliance, for example, on, uh, you know, fresh foods and, and vegetables from this continent. And so I believe um, God has called me to feed Africa <laughs> spiritually and, and, and also physically. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's a bold statement. God has called me to feed Africa. Amazing. You've mentioned the story of uh, Joseph and um, uh, about his role in actually providing solutions to a starving nation and actually not just a nation, even surrounding nations um, uh, around Egypt. And he was very, very instrumental. I wonder with where we are at as, an, as a nation or rather as a, as a, as a glo globally rather, because what you're mentioning that uh, the state of Africa, the state of food security is declining. What, what do you think uh, some of the key um, components or other practices or principles uh, as, far as far as education sector is concerned should we now adopt in order to ensure your vision is realized? I think there's a very close connection between this conversation that we are having here uh, family and education and uh, you know the big goal of averting uh, the food crisis um, my two panelists have pointed out to the fact that it's critical and it is important for us to lay a good foundation and especially for our children when they're growing up um, to grow up as kids who have values that have been in, instilled positive values and kids who recognize, children who recognize that they have a role to play uh, in the development of their own life, self-leadership, and in the development of uh, the area or wherever the Lord has placed them in. Um, the family is a basic unit of the society. And so I, if, for example, we were to look at it um, as, you know, in form of a building that is being put up and the building has pillars that is holding the uh, you know the, the, the bigger building. The pillars are actually the family. If we have healthy families, then we'll have a healthy society and we'll have a healthy nation. If we have a broken down family, and then we'll have a broken down uh, society, in essence, we'll have a broken down uh, nation. And so taking the step to work on our children in terms of being intentional, raising them up in the ways of the Lord. The Bible says that raise up your children in the ways of the Lord and when they grow up, they'll not depart from it. Um, they'll be able to know that God has called them with a specific purpose. And whether it's agriculture or whether it's, you know, the different sector of the society, and they'll be able to, you know, align their value system, whether it's hard work, early, and so they'll grow up to be responsible people who bring change. And allow me to read a scripture. Okay. The book of Psalms 127 verse 3 says that children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from him. Um, children born, verse 4 says, children born to a young man are like arrows in a warrior's hand. Um, I took time to read a bit about archery. 
and and they said something so interesting about just the whole process of picking an arrow putting it in the bow and shooting it and they're saying that an archer really has to concentrate a great deal sometimes even control their breathing system to be able to aim the arrow to the desired um, destination or to the desired target and so i think there's a key role for parents and for the society using the same analogy that the scripture gives where we aim our children essentially is where they will go and so taking time to invest on ourselves and taking time to you know aim and shoot our children in terms of speaking a blessing and just pointing them towards the direction that they need to go i believe those are key ingredients in in having uh, a successful and uh, you know a, a, a developed uh, nation and world and society yeah. uh, wangare and uh, pubs covid-19 is happening it started and i can say it took us by surprise and my question is what have you observed what are the gaps um in your sector in your areas of influence that this covid has revealed let's begin with you angari okay going back to the family um i think we've realized that um before covid we were extremely busy you know as parents you're busy trying to hustle and then now life has sort of come to a standstill we've had to slow down so you find that a lot of parents because of not having that time to spend with your children you then you know you're in the house together and you do not know how to relate because it's been work school sleep leave the house but then now you're all confined in the same space and so you then realize that i actually do not know my children i actually don't spend quality time with my children so i feel that this covid period has sort of been a time of returning families to the family table where families can then spend time together where families can then eat together because you'll find that a lot of the time i i believe it's been maybe you're eating in front of the tv someone else could be eating in the bedroom i'm eating at a different time but then now we are all at home together and i'm feeling that it's a time where people are being pulled to come together being pulled to um to just spend more time speaking get more time spend more time getting to know about each other um for us as a family it's been a time of even playing board games like for instance yesterday we were again playing with our cards just playing and getting to see another side of our children that we didn't know um it's been a time where i know my husband has been spending a lot of time playing shooting hoops with the kids it's been a time where as a family we have also um built different family altars um where we worship god in terms of praying for other people other people who've been affected praying for the world i know like with our extended family that and this was at, uh, something that my dad spearheaded for us as a family is that we then created a family prayer circle so for the since i think at the end of march we we then have been having these prayer circles where we have someone from the family leading for about 5 to 7 days and every evening the children look forward to what are we praying for today who are we praying for so it's just been a time of returning to to the family table and also a time of returning to to the lord's table yes. thank you so much pops what do you um, say i think i'm already inspired by what wangari's hood is doing yeah and um i will say it has affected me in two ways or affected around the work i do number one is to face the reality of the brokenness that has going been going around i think one of the things that happened at the peak of covid is having clients who were calling me to tell me their children are either exposed to pornography you know i thought she was online studying and then i discover she is watching porn like i don't even want her i remember that parent was really beating herself and also feeling like she's not a good mom and also my child is you know she, i have a bad child and then the other reality was also the domestic violence and i think it has hit in very many ways and i want to say that domestic violence is not only the beating up it's also the emotional wars that are happening in families also the mental and of course also the financial all these things that are burdening have also been a reality that has been facing the direction of the work that i do i work with uh women 
I ran a program called Women Arise. And so having those women clients who had been there before and other new ones coming into those issues. And then the other thing is also the parenting spot. Yeah, there's a forum we've started called, called Parenting Hot Seat, Kitimoto Ya Uzazi. And of course, in this space, it's having the conversations with parents in terms of, first of all, affirming and also challenging. And one of the things we are doing, we are not discussing the children in the parenting hot, hot seat. We are discussing the parents. In terms of, are you aware of yourself? You know, are you growing? Are these areas in place? You know, issues like love language and how it affects your, your, your parenting space and all these other things that are mostly self-awareness because we parent from what we know. And, and it has been a very enriching platform to realize that during these COVID times, also the incompetence of our parenting is coming off. Even for myself, to just realize that I've been over re relying on house helps and delegating my children and now I am stuck with them. And I love saying this, I'm not ashamed that I am not very good with small children and both of my children are small. You know, and uh, we also have adopted children, but they are bigger. But these two small ones, it has been a place for me also challenging myself for personal growth and to just understand that, you know, as much as this is what I tell other people, I'm actually coming to the place of, you know, yeah, Dr. Heal Yourself. And I think it has been very, very inspiring. And the other thing that has also come off during this time is to also face the reality of the teenage pregnancies, which is a big deal and it's really going out there. And to just face the reality, what if the abortion bill and the comprehensive sexuality education is pushed forward, you know, and it goes ahead and it's executed and implemented in all the institutions. And I was just thinking, it comes back to family because when you look at the seven pillars of the nation, Family is the place where everybody goes back to in the evening. The economist will go back to the family. The politicians goes back to the family. Art, entertainment, and media censorship that our children are exposed to, it comes back to family. And I think it's, it, it is such a big reality and a big hit for me to realize. By the end of the day, the back still rests with the family. And that is why in all the approaches of even the work that I do and the other coaches out there, it is to empower the families to meet their own needs for their children. Because when everyone is gone, parents are still there. Yes. Thank you, Paps. Wangari was saying that uh, COVID has revealed the time gap in terms of families spending time together. Paps, what I'm picking, a uh, key thing is awareness. The awareness gap, awareness of who you are, the awareness of your styles of parenting, the awareness of just how uh, the, 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 the essential of the, or rather the essence of family unit, awareness of importance of family. Pastor Charles, I don't know what has, what gaps have you seen? A couple. I think the the first one is that uh, we have sort of been pushed into the future, probably like 10, 15, 20 years into the future, where by now there's a lot of reliance on technology. Meetings are being done online. Um, and in essence, what that does uh, is that, in a way, it sort of cuts you out from people where you socialize, you open up, you talk. And especially speaking as a man and speaking on, on, on behalf of, of, of men. Um, there's a way we, how men connect when they come together and you know they open up uh, through, through nyama or through hanging out or and, and what have you. And so you know the, the regulations of you know social distancing and you know and especially earlier on in the pandemic, uh, you know, very limited uh, meetings. So lots of men have gone, you know, into their cocoon. I've had uh, lots of stories of, you know, men were just drinking themselves like crazy at home. Um, probably because of uh, this, uh, you know, social interaction being curtailed. Or secondly, probably as a result of losing their livelihood or a percentage of their income and being in a tough you know, situation trying to figure out, you know, do we downgrade, do we move uh, to the rural areas? And so it's been, I think, a season has a, that has exposed, uh, you know, weakness, especially in the lives um, of men, being in a difficult uh, situation whereby, you know, you've lost a livelihood, you're supposed to provide leadership. In fact, I remember... Um, uh, one, I think one of the, the clips that was aired during the news of, uh, it was actually a lady who was, who was being interviewed and they were sitting, uh, you know, in a bus park. I think they were going, moving from Nairobi, one of the, you know, informal settlements in Nairobi, 
going back to western and so this lady was speaking very confidently said oh yeah we came here very early in the morning you know all our sofa sets are here we are ready to move but then we realized that uh, we don't have enough bus fare and she said i've sent muze to go and find enough money so that we can you know we can have enough you know to take us back and you know thinking where is that man what is he going through where are the men what are they going through and so um i believe it's a space that perhaps we need to be alive and sensitive to the fact that uh, uh men have been affected differently and and maybe to sort of figure out how do we um you know overcome this challenge yeah thank you paps you've mentioned weakness and uh for me what i see a gap um it's an interesting gap and is as far as relationships are concerned um pre covid people would easily avoid conflicts you know avoid confrontations because men would go to work women as well who go to work you know we are busy apart from being at home and so at home we spend less time together children go to school but now covid has happened and we are all confined just like wangari said at home and then we realize hey now i have to face this person when i have a conflict previously i'll just wait till morning go to work come back in the evening and eat and sleep the same with children and now we have i have to be in the same house with the same people you know and i haven't learned how to cope i haven't learned how to handle um misunderstanding conflicts and therefore previously we were used to escape responses whereby either deny something exists a conflict exists or um flight but now being faced at big ho- being at home i'm now uh, as opposed from uh, being a, an skp or rather escape response i'm now applying attack response whereby this is my space the little this is the my corner in this part of the house and um so that's a big challenge that i've seen and that's why there's been a, an increase of um domestic uh violence you know uh for you who are watching us at home what has this covid-19 what gaps in your life in the way you live in the way you relate with people has this covid revealed to you just take the time and just think through what are the gaps what are the weaknesses what is god showing you i love what david said that such my heart o oh god and see if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting now that brings me to this uh uh as we wrap up our session today what is god's heart concerning where we are today in terms of families in terms of education in terms of children in terms of mentorship what is god's heart for those who are watching us at home what is god's heart wangari um i think i would say as i think we talked about it earlier but that god has called us as parents to raise up a godly um generation a godly offspring and i think that's our main core mandate so whatever area that we're in whatever market segment that we're in i think that should remain at the core um because i think paps mentioned that whatever and i think also pastor charles mentioned that whatever we do in the home is what will be projected out in the society so he's calling us to raise a godly offspring to spend time with them um there's something that we were talking about earlier saying that god is calling us to pass on the baton to the next generation um you know that abraham was faithful isaac was, fa- was faithful and because they were both faithful then those blessings trickled down to jacob and so for us um you know i would look at my own family for instance and and see that my grandmother my grandparents were faithful and they passed on that baton to my parents who then passed on the baton to us and then i always think that I shouldn't be the one who should drop that button down. I should pass it on to my children. So I think we are being called to to go back to the place of 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 speaking blessings over our children, of speaking God's word over our children, of ensuring that um the the you know values are instilled because we can't expect to have a a a good society if the, it doesn't begin in the home. 
Thank you. Perhaps. For me, God's call is for me to fix my broken doll. You know, I am the broken doll and I need to keep on fixing myself without being ashamed that I am broken. And I just love this scripture in Jeremiah 10, 20. I'm just going to paraphrase it. And the Bible says it's actually Jeremiah giving a lament. You know that the tent is broken. You know, and my children have also been broken and they have gone away from me. And he's asking who will fix, you know, my tent, who will strengthen its, peg, its pegs once more. And for us to still realize by the end of the day, the docket rests with me to first of all fix myself so that I'm parenting from a place of consciousness and educating my children towards life. And I want to also mention six areas that we need to quickly rethink even as we think about uh, fixing the tents and also, you know, fixing myself as a broken doll. And these are six areas that I believe we need to keep on continually stimulating our children into. And number one is spiritually, for us to always remind our children that God is your father. Because sometimes we are not perfect. I'm not a perfect model to my children. And I need for them to keep on realizing, James is also not a perfect model to our children, for us to keep on realizing that they need to look up to God. And I believe when you see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Babylon, it's because God had become their go-to place. That is where they are able to stand up for him even in those crises. And if our children can go to the world and stand up for God in those places, I think we'll have been successful parents. And the other place, very quickly, is physically. For us to also encourage our children towards life. In terms of lifestyle, even right now that we are locked up and we are home throughout. Even about eating, we sell sweet potatoes and I remember many mothers will come and they'll be like, my children are pending guashe. You know, so... Uh, I will only buy a small quantity. But sometimes you also think, are they also taking in life in terms of also their diet? Because we might be the parents who will bury our children young if that is not a place that we are also training them towards life. The other place is intellectually to also say that every child is smart. Every child is smart. Every child is intellectually up there and allow them to go to position them. We are going away with the fourth industrial revolution from going to the times of output and impact. How is my child going to solve problems in the world? And every child can be equipped for that. Very quickly, the other place is also in terms of economic. We need to empower our children economically. I believe when you look at the, the billionaires, the COVID-19 billionaires, those are wrong financial decisions that people are making. And they're not thinking about the upcoming generations. Also to teach our children in terms of values and also in terms of money management because we need to start early on that area. The other places is emotions. Why? Because in future work will be intense, work will be rapid, and of course there will be more pressure on our children in the future of work with the robotics and automation and everything. How about empowering them emotionally so that they're able to withstand those places and become resilient? And finally, social. Let's keep on encouraging our children to build social skills so that they are people. I actually love this, uh, is it proverb or a saying in Kikuyu that says people are things. And we need to still encourage our children on social skills, whether they are introverted or extroverted. Because when you look at Daniel, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, Daniel and the three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were able to negotiate their way around Babylon. They were assertive, they were able to express themselves, and that is how we will be able to raise a generation that is influential from the space of home. And so I, my parting shot is, you know, the revolutionaries that will change the world must start from home. Amen. Yes. Amen. Pastor Charles. I think for me, as we have uh, read in the scripture in um, Psalms 127, the children are arrows. They are not stones. There's a difference between throwing a stone and throwing an arrow. There's more intentionality that actually checks in when you're shooting and aiming an arrow uh, as opposed to when you're throwing a stone. So, you know, despite how crazy and busy our schedules are, in fact, there are people who've realized that working from home is even more difficult than working from the office because of structures and what have you. And so probably you thought that by working at home, you have more time for your children, but you're ending, you're ending up not having any time for them. So let's be intentional. Let's shoot these children like arrows to their destinies that the Lord has called them to be and the called them for. And the second one is, is for men. I mean, for us just to take up our position and to lead our families, uh, to elevate uh, those altars of prayer, altars of worship, altars of uh, reading the word of God together at home, um, and, and just know that we are leading and guiding. I mean, our wives are awesome, you know, in terms of praying, in terms of reading the Bible, but, but this is a role that has been cut out for us in the scripture. So let's take leadership in that 
and I believe we'll see God do amazing things. Thank you very much, uh, Wangari, Paps, and uh, Pastor Charles. And for you who is watching, I don't know what the Lord is speaking to you right now. I don't know what convictions God is birthing. God wants to transact with you. God is counting on you during this pandemic. And as the book of Daniel is written to us to show us an example of the kind of people, kind of man, kind of a woman that you can be, that regardless circumstances and situations changing, Daniel was consistent. And Daniel stood a man to be counted. And therefore, I want to challenge you today, regardless of your age, regardless of your occupation, regardless of what you do, God is counting on you. Would you dare be a Daniel in this generation? Dare be a Daniel in such a time as this. So thank you for watching. And now invite um, Pabs to just make a prayer for the family and just as we close the session. Welcome, Pabs. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of having families. The Bible says the father of the fatherless through whom all families of the earth are blessed. And we first of all love the way you father us. Thank you for being such a faithful father even in our weaknesses. Even in our shortcomings, Lord, as we lead our families, you have been there. May you help us to continue pointing our children more to you because you are the perfect father. Help us to teach them your ways, to expose them to the truth that will set them free even together with their generations. And Father Lord, we also repent as families for where we have dropped the ball. Forgive us, O oh God. Forgive us, O oh, you have not exposed our children to the truth enough, where we have not led them, O oh God, even led them away from our weaknesses and our shortcomings as parents. Forgive us, Jehovah God, where we have parented from inadequacy instead of from the place of faith. Because you are calling us to faithful parenting, not perfect parenting. We just look at this mother who is relentlessly you know, charging her child in Proverbs from chapter 1 to 10. You know, my son, my son, my son, my son. Probably if it was Bathsheba, she was not perfect, but she was faithful. May you call us to the place of faithfulness, to lead our children faithfully, that we shall not parent from a place of guilt and inadequacy and trying to cover up things. Help us to also expose our own wounds as parents and as your children to you, Jehovah God, that you may continue to heal our brokenness, even as this generation, Jehovah God, that is parenting amidst so much crisis. We are the parents who are addicted, oh God. We are addicted to technology. Some of us may even be going through sexual addictions. And Father Lord, we pray that we shall still parent from authority. We shall not let our children fall away because we were not feeling good enough. May you help us to rise up and by your grace to keep on trusting you, Lord, to heal us, to, to, to restore us, to, to just Jehovah God cause everything to work together for good concerning our generations. And we entrust our children to you. The way Samuel was brought to the temple and the mother said, you know, he belongs to God and all of his days shall belong to God. Help us to remind our children that they belong to you and help us, Jehovah God, even the way the Bible says in Joel 2, 28, that you shall pour your spirit upon all men and the young children, you know, boys and girls, they shall be the ones who will prophesy and the young men shall see visions and the old men shall dream dreams. Father Lord, may you restore this order in our families in the name of Jesus. Cause our families and also the family altars which you are discussing here to be the places from where prophecies will flow from that we shall be the prophets to our children to where they go to to where we work from help us to be prophets who are speaking forth your truth in all places in the name of jesus father lord we pray that our children shall be weapons and they shall be axes and clubs in your hands to execute your purposes for their generation we commit them to you and we also commend ourselves to you as parents Will you lead us? Will you guide us? Will you show yourself strong on our behalf, even in our places of weaknesses? And may you also remind us that it is for your glory and your fame that all these things are being done in our homes and in our families. Move in our generation. Cause a revival even in this time of COVID-19, oh God. Cause there to be a revival in our families that will fl flow from the families to the nations and to every other pillar of this nation. Father Lord, we entrust ourselves to you because you are a good, good father. May you teach us how to parent. Teach us how to lead our families. Teach us how to teach them. And above all, teach us how to become. For it is in Jesus' name we pray and we believe. Amen. Amen. The Lord is leading me to pray for you. 
you've discovered that uh, this season has exposed to you or revealed to you that there's an emptiness in your life, an emptiness that only God can fill. It's a God-shaped vacuum. You've tried everything and nothing is filling it. That is a God-shaped vacuum. And therefore, if you've not received Jesus as Lord and Savior for your life, just make this simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I believe you died and rose again for my sake. I make you my Lord and Savior. Be in my life now and forever. Amen. If you've made that simple prayer, you are now a child of God. You are now a new believer. May God bless you so much. And thank you for tuning in and watching with us today. God bless you. Have a wonderful week ahead. Amen.